Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I am so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today is a celebration of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and there is no other. Amen? Amen. Because salvation is only by God pardoned by his blood, and justified by his righteousness. Amen? Amen. So have a joyful spirit today. And every day if you're saved, if you believe Jesus came incarnated from heaven, died, was buried, and arose for your sins and mine, and you have repented of your sinful ways, praise God, praise Jesus, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So rejoice in your heart, mind, and soul, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. And so today, brothers and sisters, the message is about a joyful spirit. And so if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Titus, chapter 3. We start reading in verse 4. According to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. So if you're saved today, the Holy Ghost overwhelmed our spirit and poured out abundantly. That's a lot, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. We can never have too much of the Holy Spirit. The more Holy Spirit you have, the more power you will have. Amen. Amen. So now turn with me to the book of John, chapter 15. Jesus tells us in verse 23, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give you. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. So ask to be filled up with that Holy Spirit daily, every day. It's like a car needs gasoline and it needs gasoline to go. You need the Holy Spirit in you every day. Be regenerated like the first passage we read. That's renewed every day with that Holy Spirit. Humble yourself to the Lord and ask to be filled up abundantly throughout the whole day. In the book of John chapter 3, it tells us that Jesus had the Holy Spirit beyond measure, brothers and sisters, and that's why he was able to do all those miracles. The apostles were gifted with grace, with more of the Holy Spirit. And they too did miracles. A miracle is something that happens that should not happen. Amen? Amen. So every day, brothers and sisters, ask to be refilled, to fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Because, brothers and sisters, you can also lose the Holy Spirit. Because the Word of God tells us in Matthew chapter 5, 13, that you are the salt of the world. And if the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. And that flavor is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. So every morning when you get up, you thank the Lord for keeping evil from you throughout the night. And you ask him to keep evil from you throughout the day and to lead you out of temptation and fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Because in Romans 8, 9, it reads that, if you do not have the Spirit of Christ in you, you are not His. So brothers and sisters, every morning, ask to be refilled up, regenerated with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And you will have that joyful spirit. And you can feel the Holy Spirit in your chest, brothers and sisters, because He is inside of your heart. That's part of Jesus. And when you hear a sermon that is preached, and it's preached by the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit, that spirit will bounce off of you. Or if you're hearing a worship song and the woman is filled with the Holy Spirit that's singing, you will feel the Holy Spirit bounce off of you, brothers and sisters. And the other day I was at a Bible study and I met a man named Leighton. And he was filled up with the Holy Spirit. And he was rejoicing in his heart, mind, and soul. And I could see it. And I could feel it too. And we both sat there and rejoiced in the Lord, brothers and sisters. Oh, it gives me chills now and it did then too. So, brothers and sisters, I hope that you experience the same thing that I experience and Leighton experiences and everybody that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, you can have more of the Holy Spirit. So, don't cut yourself short, brothers and sisters. Ask to be filled up with more of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so now, brothers and sisters, 
It's really important that we recognize what our Lord and Savior did on that cross for you and me. Washed our sins with the blood of Jesus and nailed those sins to the cross. And so we are eternally grateful and we need to recognize what he did often. And so we will partake in that ceremony of life communion. So please go get a little piece of bread and a little wine and join me. And so before we partake, I want to share with you that when Paul visits the church of Corinth, they had been getting together for the Lord's Supper to do the ceremony of communion, but they were eating meals and they would get there before other people and then the other people would get there and they were starving. They had nothing to eat. And Paul was angry with them and said, do you not have homes to eat in? Because brothers and sisters, this is not about a meal. This is an important ceremony that God, Jesus himself, leaves us with. He leaves us with two things, and that is baptism, which is once, and communion, which is often. But it has to be done correctly. I want to read you this admonishment that the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks of it in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. So brothers and sisters, it's very important here. He says many of them were sick and, and some of them even died because they were taking communion in an unworthy manner. And so we need to examine ourselves. And he tells us if we examine ourselves and we make those proper changes, repent genuinely in your heart before you partake, he won't chasten you. So examine yourself. Make sure you're in the faith. If you are living in sin and denying the power of God, he will not come in your life. Your heart must be right with God. If you say you're going to live for God, you need to live up to it. If you are living for God, you will clean up your life. And so, brothers and sisters, please humble yourself with me and bow your heads and we'll pray to the Father in Jesus' name before we partake in this important ceremony. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Dear Father, please forgive us for all the sins that we have ever done, and even sins we did that we did not know were sins. And please, Father, fill us up with your Holy Spirit and keep us filled up every day and help us to walk that narrow path to heaven, pleasing you and doing your will. And we pray this in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so at the Last Supper, God broke the bread and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me and we will eat together. And then he took the wine and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many for the remission of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me and we will drink together. So now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. Through our Lord Jesus, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.